times t minus t. Et voilà. This is one of the coolest things ever. Okay, seriously, the the way to to arrive at the solution is just it's uh, I. I can't find words, this is so beautiful. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do something pretty damn cool. And this is something you are never going to see ever again because as far as I'm concerned, this kind of integration technique is really unique when it comes to proving this identity right right here that, that we are going to derive today. So it's going to be an absolute ride and you should totally crap your notes because this thing right here is pretty damn cool. Okay, it's the coolest thing ever when it comes to integrals in my opinion. This is called Rabe's formula for the gamma function, okay? And it's going to yield something pretty nice, a few pi's, a few natural logs, blah, blah, blah. We are going to find out what this is going to evaluate to today. It's going to be really exciting, seriously. Just, just watch the whole thing, it's so cool. At first, I would like to get rid of the upper and lower bounds right here, because we have parameterized upper and lower bounds that are not, not too cool in normal case. So, so we would like to get rid of those. Meaning we are going to introduce a substitution which comes in quite naturally. Okay, um, how can we get rid of our t right here? Well, we are going to introduce um, z minus t. Okay, because if we plug in z being equal to t, we are going to get to zero. And we are going to say this is equal to x, meaning dz in this case is nothing but dx. Okay, cool thing. We can actually plug the stuff in here. So if we plug t into here, this is going to give us x being equal to zero. And if we plug t plus one into here, we are going to get x being equal to one. So this looks way more friendly, okay? With some nice up and lower bounds. Natural log of the gamma function of. Okay, we are going to get x plus t in this case. I hope you can see where this came from, just adding t on both sides to get our z and dz is nothing but dx. And the cool thing is, like I said, this integral right here is actually already parameterized. So this right here screams for the Leibniz rule for integration, okay? We're going to give this thing a name, i with respect to t, and as always we are going to differentiate it. So differentiating i with respect to t, it's going to give us i prime of t. In normal case, we would have d dt of this whole integral, but we are going to make use of the special rule for um, the Leibniz rule, the, the special case of the Leibniz rule for integration and turn this normal derivative into partial derivative in the inside. So interchanging this um, limit with this one right here. It's a special case because up and lower bounds are independent of t, meaning we are going to get an integral from zero to one of del t, natural log of gamma of x plus t, integrated with respect to x. Now we are going to differentiate this. Okay, it's the digamma function, okay, but this really doesn't make a good point right here. We are just going to simply differentiate that. That means this thing right here is actually equal to having integral from zero to one. Of. Okay, differentiating this means we are going to take one over the argument, one over gamma, x plus t, and also we are going to differentiate the gamma function with respect to t. Okay, so I'm going to put it like this. And well, basically this thing right here um, is just gamma prime, you could say. And the inner derivative of gamma of x plus t is just one, okay? So we are going to denote it as gamma prime. Now, our gamma function is actually defined as an infinite product. And if you take a look at the digamma function, for example, it really doesn't quite matter if you differentiate our natural log of the gamma function right here with respect to t or with respect to x. Actually, they are going to result in the same thing. So 
doesn't matter if you differentiate with respect to t or if you differentiate this thing with respect to x, we are going to end up with the same thing right here, with the very same thing. It's just because this thing is defined as being an infinite product and it works out wonders. So actually, this thing right here, this integrand is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of our natural log of the gamma function differentiated with respect to x, actually. Okay? Oh, what the fuck, there was none nice gamma function. Now, here comes the really cool part, okay? <laughs> this is the really, really cool part. <laughs> now, if we take the differential of the integrand and integrate it once again, we are actually just going to end up with the integrand in itself evaluated at the upper and lower bounds. It's just how it works. Try it out with x to the third power, for example. If you differentiate it, this is going to give us 3 times x squared. But if you integrate this once again, you are going to get x to the third power evaluated at the upper and lower bound or with a plus c. Depends on dependent or um, no, not dependent. Um, I'm always mixing up the terms. Uh, definite or indefinite integral. I'm terribly sorry. Meaning, this thing right here is actually our integral. Okay, that's the solution to our integral right now. That's natural log of gamma of x plus t evaluated from 0 to 1. Now, what is that? Well, don't forget we are evaluating it at x being equal to 0 and x being equal to 1. So, this is nothing but the natural log of gamma function of 1 plus t and then minus the natural log of the gamma function of, and this is going to give us t, just. Okay, coolio. So, we actually got to this point right here. And now all that's really left to do is to basically integrate this thing right here once again and evaluate it at some special upper and lower bounds to actually get where we want to get. Can we actually simplify something here once again? So if we divide, yeah, right. Um, we can actually simplify this a bit more. Give me a second. So by the natural log rules, this is going to give us the natural log of gamma of t plus one over gamma of t. But we have this nice recurrence relation of the gamma function that this is nothing but the natural log of the gamma function. Okay, gamma of t plus 1 is nothing but gamma of t times t. Put it like this. Over gamma of t. And you see this simplified so nicely because this and that is going to cancel out. Now we just have the natural log of t left, okay? And this is what we are going to integrate now with respect to t. In meaning, if we integrate the natural log of t with respect to t, we also want to have some upper and lower bounds. This becomes clear because that's the same task as integrating our i prime with respect to t with respect to t. Okay, we are going to end up with i. So this is just like what we have before. We are integrating over a differential in the same variable, just ending up with this thing evaluated at the upper and lower bounds. We're going to have i with respect to this upper bound we are just going to set as some random variable, for example, tau. I, I really don't know, just because um, we want to have some parameter right here, okay? We are going to parameterize this once again. So upper bound is going to be tau, so i of tau, but also we need a lower bound and yeah, uh, which lower bound is going to make all of this vanish then, so getting rid of the constant that we would get in a normal case when doing indefinite integration where it's going to be zero. It's just a matter of playing around. So, minus i of t being equal to zero. Now it's just a task of integrating this thing right here. You can use integration by parts. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but this is going to give us the natural log of t times t minus t over t, this is 1. Okay, integral of 1 is just t. They added from 0 to tau. Plugging tau into here is really nothing special. That's natural log of tau times tau minus tau. Okay, putting it like this. But also we are going to have minus this part evaluated at t being equal to 0. Okay? Now, what is this at t being equal to 0 evaluated. So 
Okay, negative t is going to vanish. Now we are going to have the natural log of t times t when the limit approaches zero. That's just a matter of L'Hopital. I'm going to denote the limit as just being capital L. Okay, L'Hopital. In normal case, we would get a zero times negative infinity situation. So why not put the natural log of t up here and t down here, so t to the negative one, differentiating numerator and denominator respectively with respect to t. It's going to leave us with the limit as t approaches um, zero of one over t, negative t to the negative two. You see, we can just inverse what we had right here. So this is going to give us the limit as t approaches zero of um, negative t in this case, right? Am I right here? Right. This and that is going to cancel out a little bit. So this one over t and one over t is going to cancel out, meaning in the limit this just goes to zero. So the lower bound is going to go to zero and this is what we actually have left. Meaning our integral that we want to get at, this evaluated at tau. So we are re replacing t with tau right here. It's actually nothing but i of tau minus i of zero being equal to this chunk. Okay, we can add i of zero on both sides and then we would basically have where we want to go at. Thing is now, what is i of zero? i of zero is this thing right here from zero to one. Okay, or you are just going to take a look at this. Okay, so we are going to solve the natural log of gamma of z from zero to one. It's basically just a special case of this thing right here. And then we are done with the whole task. M maybe it's a lot of input. It's pretty quite cool. Just keep watching, okay? Okay, I need the watch time. <laughs> so this first part was already pretty dope. With this observation on the differentials within the integral that was already pretty damn amazing. But now we are going to use something different which is going to make this even more bloody cool. So this thing right here is an S tier. If I would make an, a tier list on the best integrators, then this thing right here would score an S. Up there with Ahmed's integral and Coxeter's integral and the Malmsten integrals. So we are going to take a look at this integral now. That's the main boy, the special case, basically, of Rabe's formula right here. And we're going to call it J for Jens, the mathematical mathematic meme guy right here that we are watching every two days. Okay, J on the one hand is this thing. But now I would like to make a little change of index right here. One that is going to make everything so damn good. She, I tell you, my boys. Maybe you can already see where this is going. It's so bloody amazing. We are going to let our variable x be equal to 1 minus y, for example, okay? Meaning dx is nothing but negative dy. Why am I doing this? Well, this shift of index right here is pretty magical, actually, because it preserves our upper and lower bounds and the order, basically, of the upper and lower bounds. What does that mean? Well, if we plug everything in here, if we plug 0 in here, well, then that also means that we have y to be equal to 1. Okay, or you can just um, subtract x on both sides and add y on both sides. And you are going to see that we are going to get 1 down here. If like 1 in here, how can we get 1 on the side? Well, with y being equal to 0, then we are going to get the natural log of gamma of 1 minus y. And dx is nothing but negative dy. We can distribute negative sign in here to turn around the upper and lower bounds from zero to one this way, okay? And here's the real magical thing. If you're confused by this, just rename y and x to be, uh, for example, omega, I really don't know. But point is, this integral right here is the same as this integral. So why not add both integrals together, okay? And since they have the same upper and lower bounds, we can basically just use the linearity of the integral to bring those together once again, okay? Meaning, two times j, those two added together is nothing but an integral from zero to one of this chunk plus an integral from zero to one of this chunk. Up and lower bounds are the same, so that's natural log of gamma of x plus the natural log of gamma of one minus x integrated with respect to x. Oh, it's, I'm already so ticklish. This, this, this is tickles my toes. This is so nice. This is really 
quite exciting right here. So we can use natural log properties, okay, to actually turn this into the integral from zero to one of the natural log of gamma of x times gamma one minus x. Oh boy, oh boy, here, here it goes. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever seen something beautiful like this right here? We know what this thing right here is. This is nothing but Euler's reflection formula. So multiplying both sides by one half, Okay, it's not equal to zero, two is not equal to zero. We can find a multiplicative inverse. By Euler's reflection formula, our J, J, our mathematical meme guy is nothing but one half times the integral from zero to one of the natural log of Euler's reflection formula states that this shift in gamma functions, you could say, is pi over the sine of pi times x integrated with respect to x. Oh, Gucci, so Gucci, and this is such an easy task to do now because one of, this, one of the two integrals we are going to get now is something I have evaluated before, and also we have natural log of pi integrated with respect to x, well, easy as pi, seriously easy as pi. This right here is nothing but one half integral from zero to one, natural log of pi integrated with respect to x minus one half times an integral from zero to one. I'm just using the natural log property and the linearity of the integral once again. Of the natural log sine of pi times x integrated with respect to x. Right here, my boys. This thing right here, like I said, is easy to evaluate. This is nothing but natural log of pi times x from zero to one, leaving us with just natural log of pi. Easy as that. Also, I have evaluated this integral be before just with the cosine in the argument, but it really doesn't quite matter because you can just make a little shift in variable to get to our cosine. So um, one little substitution I would like to do, let um, for example, I don't know, z once again, z be equal to pi times x, okay? Meaning dz is nothing but pi dx, meaning pi is not equal to zero, I made a proof on that. <laughs> Did I make a proof on that? Ah, it's, it's easy to verify. dz over pi is nothing but dx, leaving us with one half natural log of pi. And also we are going to have minus one half one over pi. I'm going to bring this constant pi to the front. This one over pi integral from, if it plugs zero into here, that's just zero. If we plug one into here, this runs to pi actually. And then we are just going to have the natural log of the sine of z integrated with respect to z. And like I said before, this thing integrated with respect to z is going to evaluate something that we have talked about before. This is nothing but um, negative the natural log of 2 times pi. Yeah, um, sorry, I have to think about it. It's, it's not a simple standard integral that you have to have in your head all the time. I have to think about it a little bit. Meaning pi and one over pi is going to cancel out. You are going to find a link to, the dis to this video in the description down there. Also, we are going to have the same factor of one half. Negative and negative is going to become positive, leaving us with one half natural log of pi plus the natural log of two. Overall, this is the natural log of two times pi. And et voila, if you now plug the value of j into here, you are going to end up with Rabe's formula, meaning our conclusion for today. I'm going to put this epic, epic conclusion in here, integral from t to t plus one of the natural log of gamma of z integrated with respect to z. It's going to obey a two. Okay, ln of two times pi over two plus ln of t times t minus t. Et voila, this is one of the coolest things ever, okay? Seriously, the, the way to, to arrive at the solution is just, it's, uh, I, I can't find words, this is so beautiful. Oh, it's, it's Oh, just uh, try to wrap your head around it. It's absolutely as astonishing. It's oh, so nice. I just love this thing. It's, it's seriously best of the best. This thing right here is just 
absolute A class. Thank you guys for watching. If it, no S class, S class, it's a double S class, an SS boy. Once again, a real German boy. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel. If like, if you want to support channel a bit more, by the details I created or support channel on Patreon or on click on the score request and I post from time to time. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. No, a rabe day. It's a rabe day today. It's so good. See ya.